CAT is that, that kind of exam where I just don't think you can prepare that much. Like you can prepare and maybe get a few percentile points. Uh, like if you're at 95, you can go to 99 maybe. But broadly, unless you're really taking it very seriously, which I, most of us don't, uh, you will end up in a particular zone. Marketing had this this notion that it was, uh, it's like sales and it's somehow less prestigious than uh, consulting or finance. Uh, so my parents had kind of drilled it into my head that you need to pass out, get a job in a finance company in Bombay and come back and live at home. Like, that was the goal. <laughs> but by now I had realized that listening to your parents for career advice is not necessarily the best thing for you. marketing, e-commerce marketing, content marketing. Is this the world that you see yourself in? If you dream to work in these roles at Hindustan Unilever Limited, here's your chance. Apply to Altuni's Certificate Program in Digital Marketing with HUN. The participants achieved a return of 12 times the investment with an 80% average salary hike. Hurry up! Apply now to the program from the link in the description. Limited seats available. She's a Bombay girl who is now completely converted to uh, being a Gurugram lover. Also, uh, she's had a fabulous career in FMCG um, and consumer marketing. A lot of people are asking <clears throat> why we don't have that many people from the marketing world, um, you know, coming and speaking. Unfortunately, everybody is always interested in consulting and then people come here and say that actually I had to do consulting and then I did something else. She's also an engineer and then eventually ended up shifting to marketing and had a fabulous career in ITC and she moved to Mondelez then she's been at Kohler for quite a while you know heading some of the most important projects uh, that the company has done and I think she's making some new moves in her career uh, so without any further ado can I please request uh, Urvi to be on stage guys a big round of applause Urvi wanted to settle down and start then Ankit for having me and really nice to meet all of you. Let's start from uh, your times in Bombay, uh, because that's obviously fundamental to who you are today. How much ever you love Gurgaon? Uh, <laughs> I love Bombay too. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, how did you decide to uh, take up engineering? Were you always clear about engineering? Or um, you went to DJ Sangvi, which is a great uh, uh, engineering college in Bombay. Hmm. Uh, and what was the uh, thought process at that point of time? How did you think about your career? Just a little bit of background about me which will help all of you understand why I'm okay to live in any city is that my father was in the Navy. So I actually was born in Goa and spent some time in Vizag and even within Bombay lived in a few different places. So I'm quite used to really packing up my bags and going from one place to the other. I hope that helps in understanding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while I did spend a disproportionate amount of time in Bombay, um, so I do consider myself as being from Bombay, but I am at home in a variety of cities in India, uh, including Calcutta, where I spent a small amount of time. Why engineering? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think I have a very interesting answer for that. Basically, I was good at math and science, which is all one had in terms of, you know, which direction do you go in. But I was also good at like a bunch of other st subjects, but somehow it was always that math and science are good, so you have to take science. Plus my dad is an engineer, so he was really keen that I take up engineering as well. So yeah, that's how I ended up in uh, DJ Sangvi, which was a college that was good as well as close to my house, <laughs> which is important in Bombay. I tagged along with a bunch of kids who were smarter than me. So whatever they did, I used to like follow them. Uh, so they did robotics in the first year, festival in the second, third year. And then at some point it was more like, Ab aage kya karna hai? so there was focus on uh, some of them wanted to go abroad or like like me, they started giving these mock tests and uh, focusing on that. And so MBA was a peer influence decision or was that consciously taken, Kini, I want to go to IIMs or whatever? So there were essentially three paths out of um, engineering college. Uh, the first was that you go to work in an IT company, uh, which in my case I think was uh, Accenture. Uh, the second is that you go abroad and do a master's in engineering or do it in India, which is uh, IITs are usually considered good places to do that. And the third is that you pursue a degree in management or any other finance related either in India or abroad. 
Now to go abroad to do an MBA, you need a certain amount of work ex. So that would lead us back to path one, which is working for Accenture. Or uh, <laughs> path uh, two meant that you will basically spend a large chunk of your life and career in the technical field, which I think by the time you're in fourth year, you or third year even, you realize that is this something I want to spend my life doing or not? And for me, I wasn't entirely sure. Like I did not feel it to be that uh, interesting for me that I can do a master's and then spend next 10 years working in engineering field uh, either in India or abroad. And when it came to management, I'll be honest, I think I knew very little. Um, but I did know some of my sister's batchmates who had uh, done uh, business school and were working in fairly interesting jobs in finance, in consulting, marketing, all of that. Um, so I didn't really have much of idea of what I will do after an MBA, but I had seen those people and like I admired their, their lifestyle and you know, their personality. So I thought, yeah, this is something that uh, I could look Did at. Did money at any point of time become a motivation or was, was that glamour attractive towards the school? Honest answer. Business school, in fact, is an investment. You have to spend a lot of money on fees and you know, possibly take a loan. Like I said, the glamour of seeing those people ahead of me, they looked rich, okay? I don't know if they actually were, but they had a great lifestyle. <laughs> but I did feel like, you know, when you're youth, when you're young, you're very overconfident. You feel like, paisa to kahin bhi kama lenge, right? <laughs> you, even in the engineering field, you go abroad, you will make, you know, $70,000 straight out. Or if you're in India, okay, you will get like a 12 lakh salary. Yeah. So that I was sure. How was your CAT journey? Uh, were you were you confident that this will crack ho after you start taking mocks? Or were you nervous about that? CAT is the, that kind of exam where controversial view. I just don't think you can prepare that much. Like you can prepare and maybe get a few percentile points. Uh, like if you're at 95, you can go to 99 maybe. But broadly, unless you're really taking it very seriously, which I, most of us don't, uh, you will end up in a particular zone. And the best way to know which zone you'll be in is if you're appearing for those uh, mock cats i think time is the one that gives you the most accurate like relative comparative uh, you know percentile so usme aa raha tha like to get 98 97 kabhi 99 ho jata tha so i knew that there is uh, i will get in somewhere like uh, will i get into the best business school i don't know uh, depends on the kind of day i'm having but i, I will get admission uh, you know at a place of my liking that's where i was but I didn't really know what the process is beyond just appearing for CAT. Like I had very little idea about uh, GDPI and what is it that they ask in those interviews. How do you really ace a group discussion? So I think that was my weak point. I, and really, honestly, I uh, had only seen people from a distance. So I did not really know anyone who had been through the journey and uh, cracked it. So uh, what all calls did you get? Did you? I mean, I'm sure you did well at the CAT, but like, what? how much did you score and where, which calls did you get, if you remember that? I appeared for the XLRA exam and for the um, CAT. CAT. And I also think I wrote uh, the NMIMS exam and the SIBM exam. Those were the exams that I wrote. I, I got a call from all except XLRA, where I think I had like a 98 percentile or something and did not uh, want to go to the other college which was HR focus. In CAT I had a 99.92 percentile which, uh, which is high uh, because I got lucky on that day. Um, on that particular day they had um, decided to give an extra weightage to the verbal section. I don't know if they ever did that again, I'm not sure but for me uh, that was really good because verbal was my strength. So I ended up getting like a almost 100 percentile on verbal which was a higher portion of the entire CAT. Which is why I got a 99.9 .9 percentile. Otherwise, I would have got my usual. You know, I remember this because I also I, was, I sat in the exam hall and the moment they say that you know open and then you yeah. read the number of questions <laughs> uh, and you saw 25, 25, 40. And like 40, you <laughs> this. And, and the thing is that they didn't tell you which section was 40 questions initially because they just write on the top section one, two, three, and the order also is different for different people. So this is like the time when we used to write paper pencil cat, right? Everybody's orders were different. The question order was different. The section, which section comes first, which comes second is also different for every individual as the seating arrangement is. So only when you open the, uh, you know, this you realize that, okay, you know, it is your section that is, um, you know, I mean, you're in the sense in her case, for example, it was verbal. 
कि अरे दैट हैज मोर वेटेज दिस टाइम देन द अदर बट आई थिंक इट कुड हैव गॉन आइदर वे राइट आई मीन इट कुड हैव एंड आई एक्सप्लेन व्हाट वेंट रॉन्ग आल्सो सो आई हैड इन माय माइंड आई हैड दिस स्ट्रेटजी दैट आई विल स्पेंड द लीस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम ऑन वर्बल बिकॉज़ आई एम रियली गुड एट इट एंड आई कैन जस्ट डू इट क्विकली एंड स्पेंड लॉन्गर ऑन डीआई व्हिच वाज लाइक माय वीक एरिया बट दिस थ्रू मी ऑफ अ लिटिल बिट बिकॉज़ देयर आर मोर क्वेश्चंस सो नाउ हाउ मच टाइम डू आई स्पेंड ऑन दिस सो आई एंडेड अप स्पेंडिंग अ लिटिल मोर टाइम देन आई शुड हैव um and ended up neglecting the uh, di portion of it where i got one answer wrong and that just brought me to a percentile which was below 90 so i had a 89 percentile in di uh, and a 96 percentile in quant which is good enough to get calls uh, so again i don't know how it is now but back then there yeah, were like I think sectional they cutoffs to it at all because i don't think they have the option of uh, choosing how much time they can spend on a section okay. anymore <laughs> uh, i do personally feel that cat used to be a far better exam earlier because it was truly a test of your strategy and you know how you allocate time what to go after what not to go after mm-hmm. abhi it's become a little more standardized where you know you only get exact time mm-hmm. uh, there is a certain pattern to which everything comes you can kind of almost predict what kind of questions come so i ended up with a great cat percentile but a, a 89 percentile in di which uh, automatically you know just did not get me a lot of calls so i had calls from lucknow and indore and um yeah i can speak more about my lucknow experience but let's just say that they had a, a view that people should have you know work experience at least back then i don't know how it is now so i i could not clear that and uh, indore was my uh, next best bet compared to all the other colleges that i had got uh, calls from when you were entering indore did you have a domain in mind came to get into finance marketing consulting yes because i'm from bombay and i went to dj sangvi <laughs> there was a lot of um, prestige associated with finance jobs marketing had this this notion that it was uh, it's like sales and it's somehow less prestigious than uh, consulting or finance uh, so my parents had kind of drilled it into my head that you need to pass out get a job in a finance company in bombay and come back and live at home like that was the goal <laughs> so uh, it's it's okay if it's finance or whatever else but you have to come back to bombay and like this is the city you need to be in uh, it's the best city in india right every every bombay person believes this with all their heart <laughs> some people even say it's the best city in asia world you know <laughs> so that's what i had in mind but by now i had realized that listening to your parents for career advice is not necessarily the best thing for you so i went to indore with an open mind okay without much idea of what i'll be good at or what i will find interesting but yes i had decided that i will not do something which i don't like i think i am just structured in a fantastic way for people like me which is freshers who have no idea and they're just trying to figure their way out and the first year is not meant for you to choose anything it is just a pure exploration uh, to see where you stand uh, among your peers what is the kind of courses that you enjoy what activities and activities are really important in iims beyond studies like what activities do you like to do So um all of these things really helped me figure out where I want to be but by the time I was in my second year I was really sure that I wanted to take up a job in sales and marketing Where did you intern Um so I interned at Colgate Palmolive Did your decision of getting into marketing become more strong after uh going to Colgate uh what was that experience like It was a good learning experience give me first hand I spent basically most of my time inside stores living in stores uh, modern trade stores what my project was on and just looking at consumers seeing what they're buying why they're buying in a self service format where nobody's really telling you ke ye wala le lo so I just spent my time doing that I think internship is a great place to really just start at the uh, you know at the, at the ground level and in the market it definitely made me feel like this is something that I can do for a living so before we come to your final placement at hmm. ITC uh, what did you do in the two years at indore how were your two years what were you involved in uh, what did you enjoy not enjoy tell us about that uh, i think the first year first 3 months was just like adjustment phase um, because i had never lived outside of home it was my first experience in a hostel uh, so really just adjusting to uh life it was also really hectic i think before summer placements it was all about just how do you get placed uh, what do you, what preparation do you do to uh, ensure that and as a fresher there's like this additional pressure because everyone tells you that uh, har har aadmi ka ye story hota hai matlab in the sense that fresher bolega ke as a fresher you know there was more pressure if you speak to a workex guy 
योर शील भी लाइक अरे आई हैव एक्स सो नो बडी विल शॉर्ट लिस्ट मी फॉर समर सो मेरे पे भी बहुत सारा प्रेशर है सो दैट साउंड्स लाइक अ वेरी एवरीबडी हैज प्रेशर आई डिंट बाई द वे आई कैन टेल यू दैट फॉर श्योर बिकॉज आई वॉज लाइक सुपर क्लियर अबाउट वॉन्टिंग टू बी एन ऑन्टरप्रनर वेरी अर्ली ऑन बट या एनी वे गो ऑन सो आई थिंक द प्रेशर वॉज मोर लाइक यू डोंट हैव द कॉन्फिडेंस बिकॉज यू नेवर वर्क बिफोर एंड यू डोंट नो वट दीज कंपनीज आर लुकिंग फॉर डू हैव इट or not you're just finding your place in a very competitive environment where pretty much everyone is better than you like you feel that way and they are also like some excellent people go there extra curricks there's a sea of extra curricks you can drown in it uh, there's so much happening again the key is like when you go to a buffet and you choose what you want to eat it's the same thing at business school you need to just go and dabble in everything see what's happening across uh, clubs events and see what is it that you can contribute to what do you like any uh, memorable stories from campus that you still remember uh, any incident uh, something that you really enjoyed or did not enjoy that you can tell us i think for me the really enjoyable and you know big learning part was around uh, ashramida itself uh, in the first year we had it's a leadership event okay the goal is to identify the best leader across these schools in india uh, and it's a two or three day event i forget where great people from across campuses are there and you are testing them uh, with a panel of judges so i got to see some really excellent people all of whom somehow that community like people are in touch and they always yeah. follow what they're doing because just going through that experience it creates a bond it's like a reality show almost where contestants are together for like 3 4 days so and it's it's amazing that those bonds still stay like after 10 years there are people who are still in touch yeah. because of those 4 days which i think is quite cool I think I just saw for the first time how being um, vulnerable can make you a great leader because that uh, event put them through so much pressure which they could not have endured had they not been honest and vulnerable uh, in front of like so many people so that was my first experience of seeing leaders who are not all about the look at me I'm so accomplished but more of yes I know who I am uh, this is what my strengths and weaknesses are and I'm okay with that so that's what makes a great leader and that's something i learned for the first time there so you finally got placed at itc uh, right. and uh, were you thrilled when you got that offer uh, what was going through your mind yeah absolutely i think final placements is a very pressure cooker situation uh, especially if you don't get a ppo like i didn't um, so then you have that additional stress uh, of what what's going to happen you don't really know a lot um, so it's your first lesson in dealing with ambiguity <laughs> you will get to know who's coming maybe one night before and you have to be okay with it so for me the lesson i learned in final placements was something that i had been learning for 2 years i'll again repeat it which is only do what you like and learn to say no early on because i had seen a lot of my seniors going for interviews just for like practice or fun and they ended up getting placed <laughs> <And> <laughs> the thing is that our campus had a rule which is you get one offer and you're out uh, you do not get to collect offers like you can do now i had learned that lesson that don't get under stress just because this is the first company that's coming and you want to just be out of the process this is your only shot at uh, getting a job that will be at least in the right industry and in the right field where you want to work so i had learned that lesson and i said no for like quite a uh, many uh, i did not apply to a lot many jobs that had come all of which were in finance consulting so i was very clear that i will wait uh, the waiting was excruciating because uh, consumer companies come much later in the hierarchy of things at i am so i think the waiting was excruciating but it's totally worth it because uh, like i said you only get one shot at uh, deciding what you want to do uh, so itc was the first fmcg company that had come and um, i didn't know much about itc but uh, again like i had friends in other campuses who had already got in placed or so they told me a little bit uh, about what it's like i had a great interview with them i thought i'd done badly because i just argued with them endlessly but that's what they were looking for which is fine um, so that's how i got placed and after that it was like yeah pressure gone pretty much and that understanding of business that you get now from talking to shopkeepers that's something that is really required in the early stages of your career otherwise you just become like a, a powerpoint uh, person and uh, it's hard to make decisions without that judgment uh, coming to you performance marketing e-commerce marketing content marketing is this the world that you see yourself in if you dream to work in these roles at hindustan unilever
you were limited, here's your chance. Apply to Voltioni's Certificate Program in Digital Marketing with HUN. The participants achieved a return of 12 times the investment with an 80% average salary hike. Hurry up! Apply now to the program from the link in the description. Limited seats available.